so the next step of rebuilding this antique hay wagon is wheels and tires. So first thing I've got to do is let the air out of these so I can break the bead. Got a valve stem removal tool here. So it's been a few years since I took a tire off of a rim, watched some videos, and people are getting really elaborate with it some places and using ratchet straps and jacks. And it seems like the simplest version I saw was a 4x4 and drive up on the 4x4 with the with the truck and use that to push down to break the bead. But I've got a tractor, so I'm going to see if I can just push down on the sidewall here and break these beads loose. The only caveat here is this is a really high rating, weight rating, 12 ply equipment tire. So I'm guessing this sidewall is going to be much stiffer than a regular car or truck tire. The first one popped so easily, exactly the way I pictured it, and then I wasn't able to recreate that on the other side, so I tried a few different methods until I found something that worked consistently. Another factor is that all these wheels are not the same, which causes me more problems as we go to actually removing the tire from the wheel. I bet the bucket on the skid loader would have pushed these off easier than anything else, but I had two reasons not to do it that way. First, there's a serrated edge on the bucket, and I didn't want to damage the tire with that edge. And the second reason is, probably most of the people watching don't have a skid loader, so doing it with something you might have seems more helpful. And... The trick I use for most of these tires could be done without even having a tractor. You could do this with just a pickup truck. That was a little tougher than I thought, but we got one off. We'll do the other three, then we'll move on to the next step. Almost forgot dish soap. I made a couple of attempts with one fork on each side of the wheel, and that didn't work very well. And I really think you want all the pressure just on one side.
Now obviously they make special tools just for this. But the goal here is to see if I can just use whatever I have. After my last video, I think I might want some gloves. What do you think? You know, as a young man, you're invincible, and the older you get, the more you get hurt doing something that you've done before, done a thousand times, and you get hurt, and you say, you know, next time, I think I'm going to wear some gloves. Obviously, there are several different types of specialized tools for doing this, from a fully automated tire changing machine to simple pry bars that are designed for tires. But my goal with the hay wagon is to completely rebuild it but spend the least amount of money possible. At the end, I think it's going to be something I can be proud of and I'll have everything totaled up and show the cost for everything I did. I did buy the sandblaster for $80 thinking I would use that for a lot of other projects as well. I thought the way this would work is once I got this started I would slide it around. That's not wanting to happen. See if I can get a second point behind there and then pry them together. Put my knee on this bar. There we go. I would say this is never an easy job, but I do think these specific tires are a lot stiffer and harder to work with than your normal car tire. Alright, when I get behind it, got to put my weight on this to hold it and pop. Should get easier as we go around. And that sucker is stiff. Well, there's a surprise. So I did not know that these tires had tubes in them. What percentage of a, of a tire like this when it's new, on a new tire, are they going to put a tube in it? Just something I did not know and didn't expect. I think it may have been because these rims are so rusty that could be why they did it let me know in the comments how common is it for equipment tires like this to have tubes in them when it's a brand new tire Well, I wouldn't say I enjoyed that, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now, can I look a little smarter the second time? I knowing this has got a tube in it, push the valve stem up in there before I start. Let's see, is it just as hard the second time or is it smooth sailing now? Pop that over. Now I know that it, I can't just work it around. I have to get a bite in it somewhere else. Actually changing out these tires may be the hardest I've ever worked to save what's probably $20 to pay a shop to take these off. Although there is some hassle involved in getting them taken over there and dropped off and picked back up and I'm doing this on a weekend when they would be closed. But still, that's 
Maybe not the best use of my time, but it's also good to know how to do things. And the only way to know how to do things is to get out and do things. I had the dish soap on these as a lubricant, but this one has been much harder to get off than the other ones. So thought, well, I'll actually put some grease on there. I go look and apparently I'm out of grease in the, in the gun and I don't have another tube. So I've got a little bit of this 7590 gear oil. I'm going to run that around the rim of this tire. See if that helps any. Before anyone tries to comment about me speeding up this footage, I want to make it clear that this is played at regular speed. I just work extremely quickly. So, got my big bar right here holding it so I can get that with my leg. Felt like the other way was better because I was using gravity as an assist, but I couldn't get it. And it feels like this should be so easy right now and it's just not wanting to do it. And if I get it in here and twist it, I get the hook. I wonder why this one was so much more difficult. Maybe the wheel is twice as thick. We'll skip ahead to the last little bit of this fourth wheel. So, when I bought the hay wagon, all four tires were different. I didn't know that the wheels were different. Took it up to a tire shop, took the four wheels off, took all four of them up to the tire shop, said I need four heavy duty equipment tires for this, and they put them on. Now, I, after thinking about this for a while, I actually think I remember him telling me that because of all the rust on here, that's why they had to put the tubes in it. And I guess the options there were put the tubes in it, call me and say, hey, do you want to take all this rust off? Or they could charge me for removing all that rust. But the tire shop's not going to do it for free when they don't charge that much to put the tires on. So, this one is 9 inches. This one is 6 inches. Got to do some research. See what would have been standard. Pretty sure that... I'm positive. There's no way that those 9-inch rims aren't the right rims for this wagon. These 6-inch rims are what I need. I gotta see if I can find two more. I think I might have one, or it might be like the other one. I'll have to look and see, get on Marketplace, see if I can find any rims like that. I mean, I could reuse it with those, but I'd rather get the original rims if I could. So my next task is to clean all the rust off these and get them primed and painted. But first I have to decide if I wanna reuse those rims that don't match. Anyway, I think this was a good experience, good practice on on an old skill that maybe you never know when you might need it. So I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos. I'll see you next time.